Hello guys, hope everyone is doing okay and you're ready for another EK Expo video. Today I'll talk to you about AIOs, how you can set them up the best way according to your specific needs. Now, without further ado, let's get started with AIO placement and fan orientation. We'll take a look at what happens depending on AIO's position inside your case. Now, many people seem to think that you get a different outcome if you put the AIO in the front instead of the top of the case. But it doesn't really change anything, both positions are perfectly fine. Unless, of course, you place your AIO at the bottom of the case, which you should never do. Because you don't want your pump, that's of course located in the CPU block, to be positioned at the highest point in the loop and causing air trapping. Aside from that, what does make a difference is how you orient the fans. So, let's take top mounting as a more common situation. You could orient the fans to push or pull air through the radiator and exhaust it outside the case or vice versa, so it gets air from the outside of the case and pushes or pulls it to the inside. Pushing or pulling, well, it doesn't really matter. You should just decide what's easier for you and what looks better considering the LED illuminated fans. Now, the more common way is to have fans at the bottom of the radiator in a push orientation, causing them to exhaust hot air through the radiator while showing off most of the LED effects, purely for aesthetic reasons. One scenario is to use fans for air intake. If your fans are set to get air from the outside and through the radiator into the case, you'll achieve better temperatures on your CPU, but worse on everything else in the case. Now this happens because fresh colder air is being pulled from the room and through the radiator, which then warms it up by cooling the liquid inside the radiator. The downside is that your GPU and other components will get slightly warmer air to cool themselves. This is why your CPU will have lower and everything else slightly higher temperature. Now the other, more common scenario is to use fans to exhaust air. This way, the fans get air inside the case that has been warmed up by the GPU, RAM, VRM and other components on the motherboard. The fans will then pull the air through the radiator and exhaust it outside the case. In this orientation, you'll get slightly higher CPU temps, but you'll be cooling the liquid with warmer air, causing less heat dissipation with the radiator. But the upside is that all this air coming from the components will be exhausted outside the case, lowering the temps across the board. Your GPU, VRM, RAM and every other chip and component you have in your PC will be using unheated air to dissipate the heat they generate. So, what should you do with your EK AIO 360 Elite fans if you don't want or simply don't have enough room for a push-pull regime? What you certainly shouldn't do is waste the three additional fans that come with your Elite AIO since you can use them for alternative benefits. Now most modern cases have plenty of fans mounts and you can fit them in the front or bottom for air intake. That way you'll improve airflow, getting more fresh air into your case and better thermals overall for both your CPU and other components. It can manage up to 7 PWM fans and 7 separate DRGB fans. Now this will solve any potential lack of headers or having to buy splitter adapter cables. It will also greatly improve cable management as you'll have less cable clutter over the motherboard resulting in a cleaner build, like this one here maybe. I hope I've managed to shed some light on the various aspects of EK AIO solutions and help you decide how to optimize your EK AIO 360 Elite to fit your case and your needs perfectly. Thank you for being here guys, until next time! 